Hey there, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to update your data from a database. So obviously, the very first thing are you need your imports, import SQLite 3 um, and JSON and uh, maybe base 64, depending on what you what type of data you have. Okay, so let's make some default data. I'm just going to copy and paste this. Uh, maybe a little bit more default data, maybe um, something and nothing. That's good enough. Okay, now let's make our function. Let's over here is copy and paste this. So here is the function. I have the data, the database name, uh, the name of the table, the data itself, a category, and search. Um, okay. Just for clarity's sake, let's just fill this in. Let's uh, let's give this uh, a directory. So c colon. Let's say we're giving it in the home directory. Um, my database, the database. Yes. Database dot db. That looks good enough. Let's give it a table name. It's called my table. My table. That looks good enough. Uh, actually, this should be that update should be data. Um, default data. There we go. And uh, this I always have my category and search as a list. Um, Maybe just give it a star here and over here also a star in the form of a list. I always have my category, my search, my searches as um, always as a list. Okay. And as usual, I like to rename my table with a DB at the beginning of it. So I have a statement here, DB, and then basically this table gets a, a cat, cat can add it onto this string. And at the end of our function, we typically have our um, we make a connection. Oh, actually, let's uh, we have to indent this here. Let's indent that. Let's indent this. Okay, there we go. So we make a connection here, and then we have uh, we make a cursor, and then with con we execute our string. So um, we need the data val, and then we need the, the string statement. That's what we have to make. Uh, but it's it's more complicated than, than that. So there's a couple of ways we can search for your data. Um, let me just look, show you how to, what the statements look like. So the statements look something like this. We actually have three state. Well, it could be it could be any one of these statements. It could be like this: my database set username to question mark and then something to question mark, or it could be just just a question mark by itself. Or it can look like this, where you have a where clause, a condition, where username in and then multiple values. Or it could be like this, where it has uh, something to question mark, where username equals question mark or something equals question mark. So updating your data, it can be, can get quite complicated. So I already prepared uh, a string execute statement over here. Let me just put that in. So I already uh, made this and all we have to do is develop uh, a string for this, a string for, well, this is already developed, but we need a string for columns and we need a string for conditions. Okay, let's get started. So setting up the, the first part, the column section, is actually quite easy. Um, let me just copy and paste that here. There we go. So I'm just making a temporary list and then using a for loop to loop through the data. This is, again, this is a dictionary. So I'm looping through, loop through this dictionary data and I'm appending this statement. And this is the item, which is basically uh, which is basically the key and with a question mark. So I'm, I'm making a, a sort of um, numerous statements and then we're gonna join them all I can make it from this list. I'm joining them all with this comma, and that should give you something like uh, this here. This here. That that's going to give you this first part. That's the that's the column part. Now we want to make uh, this. Actually, you know, let's um let me take a look here. So let's complete the first part here over here. I'm just going to make a little bit of space, and we just paste that. So basically, if cat equals asterisk. Again, cat and search will always be a list. That's how I, I have it set up. So if cat equals asterisk and search equals asterisk as well, meaning, meaning everything, then condition is nothing. It's just an empty blank string. So basically, uh, you won't see and you won't see this part here. It will be completely empty. So basically, it will sort of mimic this first line of update, and it will basically search. It will search for everything that has username and and something equals specific a uh, specific uh, set of data. Okay, now let's work on the second part over here, this part here. Let's work on that. Um, 
So as you know, uh, you may know. Okay, let's take a look here. Um, let's do this. There we go. Now I'm using an elf else if statement. So basically, if the cat if the category is only one thing, and if you notice here, uh, I only have one thing here. So if the category length is only one, that's why I'm using this length uh, method here. It's only one, but the length of the search is greater than one. So you notice here, there's a question mark. There can be multiple question marks here. So if there's only one of this, but multiple of this, then we're going to uh, extend our uh, data value. Um, we want to extend our data value to include search values as well. So maybe data value is basically a list of our of our, our data, of our um our data over here, like Reza and nothing. That's our data value. But we're just gonna extend, uh make it make our list a little bit longer to include whatever is in our search, what we put in for search. Um and over here this question mark. Okay, this is a comprehension list. Let me just get rid of that and put something a little bit more simpler for you guys. So let me just comment this out there and then you're gonna need a list of question marks again we're gonna use a, a for loop so um, we're just gonna loop it over so we're, we're gonna do this we're gonna use a underscore because we, we don't we don't care about the value we're gonna say underscore in um, where is it len the link or range range len and then search and then we have this here uh, again we're gonna need a temp a temp list there and underneath here you want to use a temp uh, dot append and we are appending question marks now that we have a list of question marks we want to join those question marks with a comma sign so over here get get outside the for loop and we're going to say uh, q marks q marks equals um, that with a comma and dot join temp. There we go. So essentially this gives us, uh, um, basically gives us our question marks. Let me just cut this and put this over here. This by the way is a comprehension list. Um, so uh, it's a little bit complicated. So if you don't want to use comprehension list, you can just use this, this line here and that should be good enough. Okay, so and finally underneath here after this question mark, you want your last. Or actually, just put a little space be a space here because I don't want you guys to uh, get confused. Here we're gonna put this in. And this is our final statement, the where statement, and it's gonna it's gonna be um uh this cat. The reason I'm using cats and in an index of zero is because again we're setting our category is it's, it's a list, right? And we only have one item there, white one item in our list, but it's still a list. So when you look, so when you want to get that item, you're gonna to have to give it an index. So I'm giving an index of zero because there's only one item there. And then we have a question marks here, and our question marks depend on how many items in our search. So it could be like four items or five items in a short search. So you want five question marks. So we have these conditions. Actually, no, let me clarify things. Let me just copy and paste this so everything is a little bit more clear for you guys. So I'm gonna cut that and I'm gonna put it underneath here. So this is what this is mimicking this line here. And let's let me just cut this, cut that, and we're gonna put it over here. So it mimics this line over here. And then finally, we need one more else if statement. Okay, so for the final else if statement, I'm just gonna copy and paste that here. So in this else if, let me just give it a bit of space here. So in this else if statement, I'm saying if the if the len if the len is greater than one, so it's basically uh, it's trying to bypass this over here. This is one equal to one. So if this is greater than one, and the len and search are equal to each other. The length of the search and len. So basically, if there's five categories and five, if there's five categories and five searches, and it's uh, so it should trigger this else if statement. Again, you are extending the data values. So you have your data values, and then we're going to extending to this. We extend it. We're going to add the search values onto the data values. So we're just making the list a little bit longer. And then we have our condition here, where, and then basically, oh, well, th again, this is a comprehension list. So let me just uh, simplify this for you guys. Okay, let me just comment this out. Let's comment this out here. And we're gonna put something in there. Let's call this condition two. Condition two, that should be good enough. Uh, over here, 
gonna need a for loop. So again, we're gonna we just wanna make those question marks in um, cat. Hold on. Actually, it should be uh, ct. So in ct in cat, oh, where's your four? We need our four there. Four ct in cat, and again, we probably need our temp temp list temp equals empty list. There we go for ct in cat. And then I guess you want this statement here. Let's copy that and let's put that here. Paste. And we want to append that. Um, temp dot dot append. And then we want to append it like this. So we have, um, yeah. And then let's get our conditions. We're gonna, we're gonna join it, but before that, we're gonna well, we're, we're gonna make this function condition two equals, and then we're gonna join it. We're gonna join it with an or statement. I'm just gonna give a little space here, or space dot join temp. There we go. That should be everything. Now we effectively mimicked this line here. So let's go up here. Let's grab the last one. So we essentially mimic this line. Let's cut. And let's put it down over here. Paste. And let's, uh, let's go back here. And we can finally put an else statement just in case something else goes, if something goes wrong. Let's call it else. And over here, maybe print something went wrong and I think that's all that you need let's bring this up there we go if we execute our string we have our connection here our string goes here our data values go here maybe we should work on a data value okay so the last thing we need is this data value let's go back all the way back here right to the top here and let's, I'm gonna cut and paste this into here. And I'm saying that, uh, well, basically that value is gonna be an empty an empty list initially. And I'm be looping through this data here. This is my data right here. I'll be looping through it for item and data. And I'm saying this, if it's an instance, well here, this is a, in this case, I'm, I wanna get like media data and convert it to binary. I think I explained that in one of my videos, but, um, if it's an instance of media data, then I want to convert it to a binary. So I have this. This is just a function. This is a function I made previously that converts it into a base64 data. I'm not going to show it here, but if this condition if this condition ever comes up, I want to convert it into a base64 data. And it's basically a bunch of numbers, and I'm gonna be sticking it into my data value. So um you can look at my other video if you want to if you want to know what this like how this works. Here if it in, if this instance if the if the data I have here is a list dictionary or set, right? I want to use JSON dumps. Uh, initially, in my previous videos, I used I turned it into a string and I put it into data values that way. Um, I found that if you use JSON dumps, it's a lot better because it not only turns into string, you can convert it back into its original form of data quite easily using data loads. So here I'm using uh, data dumps instead, and that's why I put it here in imports. And that's why I put this base64 here in imports too, because I wanna convert it in over here, convert it into um, base64 data. I have the, um, if you look at my previous videos, I have the, I have the function for this uh, that converts it into, but I'm not gonna show it here. And then for every for other every other other piece of data is most likely going to be a string or number. I just want to append the data value into um, into this data value uh, variable. Just append. That's all it does. Maybe I should put this down over here. Oops, oops. I think I guess there we go. Maybe I should just put this down over here. And I believe that's all you need. Perhaps we need a uh, a return statement just to show that everything went uh, right. Uh, okay, um, return and just re let's just return the string. It's just this value here, so we know that we know that it was successful. Or you can just return successful if you want. There we go, and that's it. That's the end of the video. Actually, no, just for completion's sake, I'm just gonna again. I, I'm I'm gonna include this function into this here. I'm just gonna copy and paste it. I'm not gonna explain it. I'm just going to copy and paste that function there so you you guys you guys can have it as well. 
Uh, let me see here. Yeah, let me just uh, back indent that. So uh, this is just to convert your data into a basics for data. And that's about it. Everything should be in the link descri description.